This is Liz Colburn, host of The Morning Uplift. Thank you for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. This is Dr. Mariah White, host of Your Life Matters, here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you are done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Your Life Matters, where we talk about dreaming big and dreaming bold to reach your wildest dreams in both your health and your happiness. A new show comes out every single Tuesday. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you'll never miss an episode of Your Life Matters. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. If it's important to you, you will find a way. If not, you'll find excuses. Welcome to Choose to Rise, where today we are going to be talking about when willpower is not enough. When you can just not find the motivation, the determination, the whatever it is that you need to do to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish in life. You are just stuck. And today I want to help and encourage you that if you I think it's important. You'll find a way. If it's not, you'll find an excuse. And that is the harsh reality to it. But also the beautiful thing about it as well. In order to make things happen in your life, you have to make them a priority. So if you want to connect with me more, if you want to find more Choose Your Eyes episodes, you can head over to chooseyourizeup.com. You can find out more about me and my story and what I do for a living and how and why I bring this amazing podcast to you every single week. Okay. If it's important to you, you will find a way. If not, you will find an excuse. Willpower, self-motivation, self-control, discipline, whatever you call it, we always seem to want more. We always seem to think that it's a limited thing and that you have to have more of it in order to accomplish something. People say things like, I just don't have the willpower to lose weight. I'm not disciplined enough to do that. While it may feel like it's lack of willpower that's the problem, these are really just excuses. They're really just things of saying, I'm really not that dedicated to it. It's really not that big of a priority for me. And while we might just sit around and lament or really like focus on the fact that we don't have self-control, it's really that that's stopping us from reaching our goals. This is neither productive nor useful. So unfortunately, willpower fairy is not going to come along and sprinkle some dust on you and try to help you reach your goals. In order to cultivate willpower, we have to clear a couple things up. One, willpower is not finite resource. You're never going to run out of it. It's never a limited thing. You don't wake up with a certain amount of willpower, like 100% battery, and by the end of the day, it's gone. Like You are able to cultivate it and create it, and it's not a finite thing. And the second thing is that you're rarely ever going to feel like it. So get past that requirement to begin something and just start moving forward. You need to be ready to reclaim your energy. You need to be ready to um, fill up your own gas tank. Back in the 90s, a study was done where people were given two plates. Uh, one was One group of people was assigned a plate of radishes. Another group of people was assigned a plate of cookies. And then they were asked to solve a puzzle that was, it just happened to be impossible. But the people that were uh, only allowed to eat the radishes gave up sooner on the puzzle than the cookies. And assumption was made that if you had to exercise self-control to resist eating the cookies, that your willpower to work on the puzzle was then depleted. Therefore, your willpower is a finite resource. However, since the 30 years of that uh, research has been done, there's been lots of holes punched in that theory. And the biases and the research have really come to light. While working longer might not be correlated to eating cookies, it isn't necessarily the cause. Later studies by Carol Dweck, who has an amazing book um, about growth mindset, you should read it if you have it. Um, She's a researcher from Stanford, and she has shown that people who run out of willpower are the people that believe that willpower is finite. Basically, if you're going to run out, you're going to run out. But believing that willpower is finite takes a lot of pressure off of ourselves to be accountable. And just saying that you're just run out of willpower gives you that convenient excuse to plop on the couch and watch Netflix, gives you that excuse to chow down the bag of chips because, you know, you had a hard day. And without all of those other things that have depleted your willpower, of course you would get those things done, right? 
wrong. We're just not making ourselves a priority. So instead of believing all of that stuff, what really comes down to is that you need to believe that willpower, motivation, encouragement, motivation, those are all just emotions. And when we can easier manage our emotions, that's when we can just toss those excuses to the curb and we can realize that we have way more control over our life than we really thought we did. Which also means that those dreams and those goals and those things that you really want to achieve in life are actually something that you can attain. The Mel Robbins says it all the time. You're never going to feel like doing it. However, it's not a matter of feeling it. It's a matter of doing it. It's a matter of being disciplined enough to take action even when you don't feel like it. Tony Robbins says all the time, if you need to change your, uh, you need to change your state in order to change your, your motivation. If you want to feel like you're going to do it, you have to do something that's going to make you feel like doing it, right? Writers don't always feel like writing. Athletes don't always feel like training. Entrepreneurs don't always feel like grinding. People just don't always feel like doing the things that they need to do, but they know that it's important. And when it is a priority in your life, you'll be amazed at how much more you're able to get things done. I love this quote by Chuck Close. And in fact, I almost used it at the beginning. Uh, Inspiration is for amateurs. The rest of us just show up and get to work. And when you can be proud of the fact that you can get up and make things happen, even if you don't feel like it, that's where the sense of satisfaction is so much stronger. And you've busted out the task that you need to complete. You've busted out of that barrier of like, I just don't have enough motivation. And you're going to make much more progress towards your goals by cultivating that sense of motivation in yourself, by moving forward, despite the fact that you don't feel like you can do it, but just moving forward in a way that matters. So there are six things today that I want to share with you that are going to help you move forward even if you don't have the willpower to do it. The first one is get energized. Energizing energizing tasks are the ones that excite you. They're the ones that get you moving, that get your blood pumping, that get you excited about doing something fun. So try to find a way to make your work fun. Try to make it a game. Try to make it about beating a clock. Try to make it about um, doing something that you enjoy doing. So I really despise cleaning. In fact, if you are close to me at all, you know that like I am not the cleaner in my house. I thank God every day that I was married to a man that um, is a clean freak. And so he does a lot of the cleaning in our house. However, I help. I do the things that I need to do. And when, um, when it comes down to the point of having to clean, I try to make a game out of it. I set a clock and I say, I'm going to get this much done in this amount of time, or how much of toys can I get cleaned up? How many, how much dusting of a room can I get done in this amount of time? I make it a game for myself. I make it a, a, a def- infinite task. I make it something that's going to work for me to get things accomplished. If I have all the time in the world, I'm going to put it off to all the time in the world. But if I have a certain deadline to hit, that's where it gets me really moving and grooving. The second thing is to be focused. Eliminate distractions. When you're working on your goals, turn off the notifications on your devices so you're not even tempted to look at them. This will train you to focus on being even stronger and help you in the long run. Being super focused and having a vision of what it is, want, what you want being crystal clear on the things that are going to help you actually achieve your goals, being focused in and getting the stuff done in a limited amount of time or on the an, ahead of time if, if you're able to do so, being focused gets way more done than being willy-nilly and just uh, you know, out of focus. The third thing is build habits. Habits are easier to maintain than willpower. If it's a habit, it's something that you just do. Building strong habits that you won't need willpower to accomplish in order to get to your goals. I have built healthy habits in my life that just are non-negotiables now. They're just what I do. Now, when I started these habits, they were not just the thing that I do. It was hard to build these habits, but I didn't also try to build a ton of habits at the same time. I use a plan called habit stacking where I got good at one thing and then I added another thing. And now I have lots of things that I do in my morning, lots of things that I do throughout my day and my week that help me be a healthy person. One of them is learning to listen to personal development or plugging into a good book. It started with five minutes. It started with a 10 minute podcast. It went maybe five pages in a book, but whatever it was, it was that little bit of something that I felt like I needed to get started. And then I built upon it each time. I'm doing the mindset reset with Mel Robbins right now. And in her, one of her recent videos, 
she talked about like the five minute rule. She's going to do micro, micro exercising is her thing. And so she does five minutes. And when she gets good at five minutes, she's going to move it to 10 minutes. And when she gets good at 10 minutes, she's going to move it to 15 minutes and building on that habit of doing something that she knows is good for herself. Even if she hates it, <laughs> doing something that she knows she's going to help increase her strength, increase her willpower, increase her ability to know that she can do hard things. And building those habits into her life so that they just become non-negotiables and things just happen. The next one is use a plan. Having a plan ready for any pitfalls is like building in those, some of those habits. If you know what you should do before something comes up, then you won't have to use willpower to make good choices. So having a plan, if I always joke in my house, if it's not on the calendar, it's not going to happen. I have a to-do list that's in front of me all the time. And if it's not on there, it's, you know, I prioritize things in an order that are going to happen in the day. I try to schedule out my day. So I have a certain amount of time for things that I have a deadline for myself and I have a plan in place for no matter what gets thrown at me. Now you are going to have willy nilly things that get thrown at you. You're going to have, um, curve balls that come into your life, but if you have a plan in place, you'll be able to navigate those curve balls and figure out where and when they fit into your day much easier than if you had no plan at all. And now it seems like everything is ruined. The next one is be a rebel. <laughs> Tell trusted friends about your goals and plans and ask them to help you with reverse psychology here. Have them egg you on when you're uh, not about to give in. Be a rebel and prove them wrong, right? So when, or you can have this, this thing that, um, uh, Jen Sincero did in one of her, in her books, um, you're a BA. She uh, talked about how, when she was writing her book, she gave herself a deadline. And if she did not meet that deadline, she would have to give a thousand dollars to a charity that she just absolutely despises. Um, and that if she did get her book done, she was going to donate a thousand dollars to a charity that she loved. But having that that carrot, that thing, that, that pressure for something or somebody, um, that was going to be able to help her and encourage her and be, you know, kind of hold her feet to the fire in that way, being a rebel, telling trusted friends about it, making sure people understand and, and are there to motivate her to reach her goal and hold her accountable to actually donating that thousand dollars to a charity of their choice or a charity of that's something that she disdained, um, or holding her accountable to giving something to somebody that she did appreciate if she did achieve her goal. Those are kinds of things that you can do to hold yourself accountable and also help you get to the end. The last one is remove temptation. Take anything out of your environment that's going to tempt you to not reach your goal. Out of sight, out of mind. We practice this one a lot in our house with food. In fact, my husband is the king of bringing in junk food into our house, and I like to eat it, unfortunately. So remove the temptation. If he knows if he's going to have it in our house, it's got to be out of sight, out of mind, in a cupboard, in a drawer, put away in the car, in the garage, someplace else that I'm not going to find it. And so removing that temptation out of your life is definitely going to help you receive, achieve the things that you want to do. And they're going to help you be inspired to do things that you're going to be able to do in the long haul. So when willpower is, when you understand that willpower is not a finite resource, it does not wax and wane. It does not um, come and go. It is something that is, it's you have inside of you and you can create a, any amount that you need. But using a combination of these six things that I just shared with you and understanding that when you can become crystal clear in your goals that you really want to achieve in life, you don't need willpower in order to get you there. You can just create habits. You can create um, pieces in your heart and mind that are going to help you move there. You can be a rebel and make a plan. You can build habits. You can stay focused. You can get energized and reach all of, all of your goals. So it really comes down to it. If it's important to you, you will find a way. If not, you're going to find excuses. So if you like the show today, if you want to hear more of episodes from Choose to Rise, head over to Apple Podcasts and Podbean. Leave a rating and review. It helps everyone find us more. And I love also to connect with you. So it has twofold. It is a one place for me to find you and connect with you and support you. Um, and I thank you for your encouragement and your support. And it also helps other people find Choose to Rise to be a part of our community. I'd also love for you to head over to Facebook and get connected with me there. Choose to Rise Up at Facebook. Dot com and also head over to choose to rise up.com to learn more about me and the story that we have. So I'd love to connect with you. I'd love to support you. I'd love to be with you all. And thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a fantastic